I am here at Microsoft Ignite 2018 and my guest today is Pieter Wigleven. Welcome Pieter. Thanks, thanks for having me. Pieter, can you tell us a little bit about your role within Microsoft? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, um, in product management and I focus on uh, Windows for commercial organizations. So it's a lot of things like Office and Windows and making sure that runs fine for, uh, for all of our customers actually. That sounds like a broad assignment. Um, probably you have special parts within Windows that you are responsible for, but probably I can ask you first, what was your main announcement for this week? So, as you hopefully have noticed, is this, this week we announced Windows Virtual Desktop. And that's, uh, that's the service that I've been working on for, I don't know how long exactly, but it must have been more than nine months now. So, that was the big thing for me this week. So, I'm glad to see it's out there and everyone is having great reactions to it. So, that's it. Yeah. I saw the announcement and I was kind of surprised that this service will be an Azure-only service. Why is that? Well, first of all, we want to provide customers with a first-class experience, um, which we think runs on Azure, because it has the benefits of Azure, so it has unmatched skill. So for a lot of the, uh, so just to level up a bit, like what is Windows Virtual Desktop? It's an VDI and RDSH uh, management service provided and hosted and managed by Microsoft. And we believe that you get the best experience if this is running on Azure. So you get all the benefits, like I just mentioned, you know, unmatched, uh, unmatched skill. Um, but also we're providing optimizations in uh, Office 365 Pro Plus, making sure that all of the data is located close to where your actual workload is, so close to the virtual machines, uh, connected with high-speed uh, bandwidth, low latency. So there's many, many reasons why we um, believe that you'll have the best experience in Azure actually. And but for those customers who are running on-prem will still have Windows Server and I think you've talked to some other people as well that explained all of the, the RDS technology that we still keep on investing uh, for on-prem customers. So we offer both. So the new service is not the end of Windows Virtual Desktop on-prem? Correct, correct, yes. We'll still be investing in on-prem technology but at the same time, we're making sure that we provide a great experience based on Azure. What are the scenarios that you will see, what do you think that we will see coming from this uh, new announcement? So actually what we're hearing from, from our customers is specific use cases or specific verticals. Um, so there are a few industries that very are very much likely to use uh, virtualization or remoting in general. So think of, for example, financial industry, they use virtualization quite a bit, or maybe even um, healthcare. Like healthcare is almost 100% standardized and using this solution because of compliance reasons. Government like to use it as well because of the clear data separation. All of the data remains on the server side, so either in Azure or your on-prem server. And with a few policies, you can pretty much guarantee that it doesn't land up on the land on the endpoint. So, from a compliance perspective, it's relatively easy uh, to comply. So that's just a few, let's say, verticals where we see this very commonly used. We also see specific scenarios, like maybe in education, uh, where with uh, B BYOD, students come in with iOS, Android, Windows, and how do you make sure that you provide a standardized workspace? without having to worry too much about what, what endpoint is used. Well, yeah, again, remoting is a great solution. And then we see maybe the last category, which I find the most interesting, is an increasing amount of specialized cases. Um, if you select, because this, this service is quite flexible, you can so select, depending on the workload, you can select a specific VM size. You can also select a VM with a dedicated G GPU card, and that means you can offer a 3D intensive application on a low power device. So all of a sudden you can be in a factory floor with a low performing device and still have 3D intense applications just running smoothly. And those are scenarios that maybe 10, 15 years ago we could never dreamt of. Or maybe, that's my last example, is uh, let's say you're blocked by a Windows 7 application and therefore you can't migrate to Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus. 
But what you can do as well is use, give your employee a shiny new device. I see you have one. Give, give them a n beautiful, nice, shiny device with Windows 10, up to date, everything the latest, and then just remote that Windows 7 application into their session. So that's, that's another way, you know? And it's just, I'm sure we'll figure out more scenarios as we go. Really, really interesting. Um, one of the things that I was thinking of, from a commercial perspective, how are partners responding to this? Is this something that partners will benefit from? Yeah, definitely. We've been working uh, behind the scenes on this, uh, this program and this service for quite a long time, including major players like Citrix, for example. Uh, Citrix is a great partner of us and they can add value in many ways. So we have specific management components and if you're a Citrix shop and you require specific capabilities that Citrix can offer and we might not or they're better at it, then you re can replace specific components of the management plane with theirs. Um, so that's just, let's say, around the VM, and then inside of the VM, Citrix can offer a lot of additional layers, app layering or masking, or there are several tricks and several uh, added value that they can do. And I'm just saying Citrix, but there are many, many, many players out there that we're already working. Um, we, I think we announced that we're working together with about eight partners, and we'll just keep on extending that list. And what is on the roadmap for the virtual desktop? for the near future? Yeah, so the roadmap is first uh, launch the product. So, <laughs> so right now, uh, what we announced here at Ignite is that we'll have a public preview coming up soon. Um, so this calendar year, we'll have a public preview and then we're expecting to GA the service early 2019. So that's top of mind for us, making sure we capture all the feedback from customers and just launch a great product. We have some items on the roadmap, um, but yeah, our first thing is get the thing out of the door and make sure it's a great experience. Thank you very much. I think I learned, I learned a lot. I think it's for the viewers as well. And uh, hopefully we see you next, back next year to uh, provide us with some more interesting information and probably new products, new announcements around from Windows Virtual Desktops and other things happening around Windows. Thanks a lot, Peter. Thanks. Thanks for having me.